Hello everybody, it's Kendra here. Welcome back to this DIY Mom Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you all of my projects, mostly knitting um, this time that I've been working on over the last few weeks since I last shared with you. So also, most excitingly, since my last update, I am no longer pregnant. Woohoo! Baby was born two weeks ago and um, you may be able to hear her in the background here. I'm sure there will be some breaks and things um, throughout this recording, but I thought I would jump on and give you a little bit of an update. So I will share maybe more at the end about it. Um, however, baby was born two weeks past her due date, right at 42 weeks. And somehow during those two kind of, they feel like bonus weeks where I didn't really feel like doing much. I did do quite a bit of knitting. And so most of my progress that I'm sharing today was kind of from that time. I have worked on a few things here and there since then, but I do expect that my making will decrease a little bit just now with an extra little person around. Um, and then also just being summer, I feel like I don't usually make as much because we're outside doing things. And um, sometimes it's just things change compared to being cooped up in the winter. So with that, I do have some things that I have finished. I'm gonna start with sharing the things that I finished and then what I'm working on and maybe a few plans and a few yarns that um, came in. So I kind of have some plans for those as well. So the first thing that I completed is what I'm wearing today, which is the May sweater by Andrea Mowry. I think it was almost done the last time I just talked with you. So this is a t-shirt that has a very subtle patterning throughout. It has a big v-neck in both the front and then also in the back. It also has the high-low hem, which I don't think you'll be able to see here, but it is a little bit shorter in the front than in the back and has a little bit of detail on the sleeves and some shaping throughout. And yeah, I'm really happy with this. I knit this top out of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash Worsted Weight in the Fjord Heather colorway. And it took me seven 50 gram balls to make the top. Um, and yeah, I knit at a fairly loose gauge. And to be honest, I didn't love working on it mostly because I wasn't really thrilled with the needle. It felt like it kind of hurt my hands. I don't know if that's the larger needle size. Um, I mean, worsted weight's pretty common to work with. I haven't really had an issue before, but it just wasn't um, as enjoyable in that sense. So I think I would like to make another one, but I'm going to try to pick up another needle in that size um, to see if that makes a difference. Because I really think that this will be something wearable because it's so loose, it's fairly thin. Um, and yeah, it's just a really fun piece and I'm really enjoying the color of it. So because I only used the seven and barely broke into the seventh ball of this yarn, I had a few left over. I believe I had ordered 10 back when they were having their purchase 10 sale and then you got a certain discount on them. So I used the leftovers and made a little top sweater for my son. This pattern was called One for the Boy and the pattern is by Amanda Kramer. Um, however, with this, I basically use the measurements and the instructions for making the shawl color. However, I change the detail on the front. Hers has a cabling with this X's and O's pattern, and I use this kind of, it's more of a lace than a cabling, but it kind of looks like a faux cable, I guess, using a variety of knits and, and um, slip stitches to make, it's kind of like a chevron arrow detail that points up throughout the middle there leading into the shawl collar. It was an okay pattern. I didn't love how wide this portion was. It seems to kind of sit a little funny on him. I think I made the size three or four um, in it. And again, this is with the Wool of the Andes Superwash. So it's a really cute little color um, and a pretty quick knit. And I guess the bonus is that we will be matching. So I did finish one more sweater um, since the last time I recorded and I don't have all the, I blocked it, but I don't have all the ends clipped and everything. So I'll do that and I'll try to wear it on the next one so you can see it on. Um, again, just trying to use the few minutes I have to get this episode recorded and um, yeah, we can take a look at it more next week. Uh, but this is the Dark Water Sweater by Jennifer Steingas. She's well known for her fern and feather, I think it's called, pattern, which is a worsted weight. Um, and I opted for this pattern. I really like how it's not your traditional sort of color work, um, but I think it's pretty interesting. 
So I knit this out of whole super soft and the colors were mariner is the dark navy color and then topaz is the color work and yeah i'm really happy with it it's held single so it is a fingering weight sweater it has some short row shapings in the back and yeah it's just a pretty basic color work sweater with just a simple yoke design you can see we have a someone joining us here as expected so Whole Super Soft is known for being a yarn that has a lot of spinning oil on it. I know we talked about that previously um, and I was just so happy when I washed it to see how much it plumped up and filled in and it's just one of those things that feels like it just totally comes to life when you first wash it because it looks so much more loose and just each fiber kind of comes to life. So I'm really happy with that. Um, and after putting in all that effort and getting it done, you really want it to be something you're happy with. And I think it really will be that for me. All right, something else I finished was just a quick little shawl. I'll show you it here. This is the Blue Jean Saturday design. It's very simple. I've knit similar things before just with garter panel and then a very simple lace eyelet panel um, all throughout. This just uses one skein of yarn. The yarn I use from Knit Crate is from the Knitology line. It's Snow Stylish, it's called. And it's their cozy sock, which means 75% merino wool, 15% nylon, 10% cashmere. And so it's very soft. And I knit this really in the two days before baby was born. It was kind of one of those last minute projects that was just trying to keep myself distracted and busy. And we ended up spending some time in the hospital before she was born. And it was really during that time I got most of the work done. So I had to kind of jump ahead and take a little, some newborn pictures of her wrapped in this because I know I'll always remember that as being the time I knit it. It is fairly small, asymmetric design, um, but it's nice and long and you can wrap it around a couple times and it's just really nice, um, easy sort of accent piece to wear. All right, another finished object is a very basic baby cardigan. This is actually for friends of mine who are due kind of any day with a baby girl. Um, and I have had this yarn for a long time. I've knit a few baby things out of it in the past. Um, it is, I think it's just a, it is loops and thread, Michael's yarn. I'll have to check, I'll put it at the bottom. What kind of yarn this is exactly? Um, but it has this little arches design. Let's see how well you can see down the front and the rest of the body. And I just put some little buttons at the top. So I think the pattern said it was six months and so it won't fit for a while anyways, but our friends live away. And so we're going to send it in the mail as just a little baby gift for them. The only other things I have finished in the last few weeks have been a few dishcloths. And I just picked up some cotton at Walmart the other day when I was there. And it's just been a really easy, simple project that's easy to pick up and set down. Again, I feel like I've got lots of interruptions these days, which is totally fine. Um, but it's nice to have something simple and I haven't done anything crochet in a while. So I decided to crochet these um, dishcloths and then make some scrubbies. And I just kind of, I'm going to keep them aside for now and we'll see. I use pretty much all knitted dishcloths and scrubbies right now. And so I have some that are wearing through that are looking a little older. Um, so I might, they might replace in mine or I may keep them and use them as a gift coming up. I'm not sure, but I just made a couple of them. Very simple. Didn't really use a pattern. I just um, modeled them after the size I like to use. So I made just two and that's from one, I think they're 50 gram balls. And it's just a, like, it's a self-striping, I guess, is what it would be. I'll take a look if I've got the label and can share that with you. And then the ball of the scrubby yarn, I made a few. I made three, I guess. Little circular scrubbies, which will be just nice to go. I'll probably pair them with the gift, with the dishcloths if they get given as gifts. Um, and if not, we use these all the time in our house too. And we'll be used for that. So I do have quite a bit of the scrubby yarn left and I also have picked up another ball that's blues and purples and things. This one here, this is the Bernat Handicrafter, <clears throat> which is what the other one was as well. This one is in the Moon Dance color. So I'm going to make a couple more out of this. Just again, just to have on hand something, an easy little project to pick up. Oh, the other one, Bernat Handicrafter Stripes in 
country stripes is what it's called. So if you're interested in some of these types of dishcloths, this is what it looks like when it's crocheted. I believe these are 27 crochet stitches wide. And again, these are just all crochet and just very simple projects. I have this in my knit crate bag. I can't recall if I showed you last month, but it came in my stock crate and it just says make something today. So it has all the dishcloth things. So it's easy to pull out and keep all those things all together. All right, moving on, I wanna share with you some of the things that I am currently working on. And first up is my hand spun sweater. So I picked up a bunch of Corydale from Legacy Studios, which is a yarn and fiber company in Cochrane, Alberta. And um, I picked up four different colors. There was three shades of gray and one of this lavender color. And I decided, um, I kind of mixed them up. I wanted it to be really marled and have a lot of that barber pulling where there's um, both colors happening in the one strand. It's this very basic two ply. I'm not a very experienced spinner, so I'm just kind of been having a lot of fun trying different things out. I spin on a antique sewing sewing machine, on an antique spinning wheel um, that I picked up on a local buy and sell group um, from a someone who was selling it off for their grandmother who had brought it to Canada during World War II um, and there's no maker on it so I do I have gotten asked that quite a bit what kind of spinning wheel I have and that's all I know but it has been working pretty well I've been trying to kind of keep up with it and make sure that um, it's in good working order and trying to repair things the best we can when that happens um, and so this is the yarn that I ended up with and I picked up was it 400 500 grams of this and I was really unsure of the yardage I had measured some but it's a little bit thick and thin and I just wasn't sure I would have enough and I really really wanted to make a sweater out of it it's soft not quite as soft as a merino I think it's considered a medium staple length um, however it is soft it was really easy to spin um, but it's supposed to be a little bit harder wearing. I know some of the merino accessories that I've made have started pilling in things, which is totally fine. Um, but for a sweater, I wanted something that would hopefully hold up a little bit more. So I decided to pair this with a yarn I had on hand. And it's actually this alpaca blend. This is just a Michael's Yarn Lion Brand Yarns, a touch of alpaca. Let's see. It is in the charcoal color, and it is definitely, I think it's an acrylic blend. Yeah, so it's 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. Um, and I wasn't, I mean, originally if I was just choosing yarns, I'm not sure I would pick a primarily acrylic yarn to pair with it. Um, however, since I wanted it more just for the accents and things, I thought it would work, and I really liked how they look together. And I do have two balls of this. I'm nearly out of this one here. I have actually used from both of them at once because I had started the sleeves two at a time. Anyways, when I just saw them together, I thought it would work out really well. And I started on my sweater and I'll show you where I'm at. However, I started to get really worried about yardage. Felt like I was going through yarn faster than um, what I had available. I had the plan to use the dark for the edging, like for the button band at the front, the top and the bottom ribbing, the sleeve cuffs, things like that. So when I started to get concerned about yardage, I decided to start striping in that charcoal alpaca. So this is all just plain hand spun at the top. And pattern wise, I'm not really using a pattern. I'm using some of the numbers from the flax sweater, which is just a basic pullover. However, I'm making this a cardigan. So I did a few, um, just a little bit of math, I guess, to figure it out. Um, and so far, again, being top down raglan, it's easy to try it on and it seems to be working out for me. Um, so this is all just plain hand spun. You can see there's a lot of that charcoal color coming through. And then starting under below where I split for the sleeves is where I started striping in the charcoal. So we'll start by showing the back here. You can see as it comes down, we've got some um, fairly widely spaced stripes and then they get a little more solid down to the bottom. Um, and yeah, I, I started, as I started putting them together, I really liked how it was looking. So I just copied that on the sleeves. So I do have the body and both sleeves done. 
Try to hold it up here. I think I did make a bit of a mistake on the sleeves when I was dividing. I wish I would have picked up a few more stitches because they are looking fairly long and thin, but when I try it on, it fits and it works. So I think they're just a little longer than they normally would be um, because they've got a little more at negative ease perhaps, but it's working. Um, I did the button band on, this side is finished where the buttons will go. However, since I didn't have any buttons that worked, I didn't want to finish off this side of the button band until I picked up the buttons. So I actually ended up ordering some on Etsy from a shop called Bonjour Handmade out of Montreal and they haven't arrived yet. I picked up a couple different kinds. They were really reasonably priced and I wasn't sure, um, depending on which ones I choose, I want them to be about three quarter of an inch, inch buttons, but I picked up a few varying sizes to see what looked best. And so I'm not sure how many I'll need and I just wanna hold off making the button holes until that's done. So it'll, it's not, ready to give you the full look yet. And I know it's kind of hard to see in this state, but we are definitely getting close. There's our full view of the sweater. I'm just so pleased with how the hand spun is looking. I really love that marled look. I, you can see there's a little bit of striping in some areas, but I was trying not to get too much striping. I know there's lots of ways you can spin to get more of that, um, but I wanted this one to be fairly marled, and then now we've got the charcoal adding in some striping as we go. So that is where that is at. Once those buttons come in, it really won't be hard to get this finished. And I really look forward to having it to wear and to share with you next time. I'm using my Shiagu interchangeable set um, of needles. I think this is the size six for the edging. And then I think I used an eight for the body. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. But you will notice for being all so close to being done, I have a lot of yarn left and I definitely did not to need to do as much striping as I did, maybe even none at all. Um, oh well, I'm not really worried about it. I think I've got enough here to actually make a pretty decent sized project. Maybe we'll end up with a matching little sweater. I don't really know yet, um, but yeah. I don't mind having too much of the ham spun because I know that it will get used in another project and I am really happy with how the sweater looks with the striping. Um, I mean, I guess the option being I could rip it back and do more of the purple, but now that I've done it, I'm really happy with it, even if it's not um, maybe my original intention for it. All right, my next work in progress is just a quick one to show. Um, you've seen it before, it's just a pair of socks I had cast on. Um, this is using another Knit Crate yarn, the Knitology in the colorway Mallard. It is 40% Merino, 40% Peruvian Highland wool, and 20% nylon. Um, and so I finished my first sock, and last time I was kind of debating whether I was going to add a contrast color to it. Um, but in the end, as the weather has warmed up quite a lot here, I decided to go with shorty socks. And I think I will get to wear them quite a bit because it's shoot weather now. Boots are done. Um, so here is the first sock. You can see the way that those colors, um, it's very subtle, it is dark and a little bit hard to see. Um, I didn't grab my blocker, but there is rib on the top, which I've just been loving on all my socks lately for myself and for knitting for the kids. Um, but this is the first sock. I just did a basic fish lips kiss heel and rubbing at the top there. Um, and I am this far along on my second one. Again, it's just a nice kind of palette cleanser with all these big sweaters. Being able to pick up something small like this is really fun. Um, and I am knitting it on my Haya Haya Sharps in the US Zero two millimeter needle, which is what I've been doing on all of my socks. However, you may recall I was using my nine inch circular and I got past the heel on my first sock before throwing in the towel. <laughs> I just decided, why am I doing this? I'm not enjoying it um, as much as I would be otherwise. So I had switched to my Haya Haya for the ribbing on this one and then for my second sock. And I was a little bit worried about my gauge um, because I know some people say you knit looser or tighter on the nine inch circulars, but really they seem to be looking the same. They have the same stitch count and it seemed to be the same width. So I am almost to my second heel 
and expect that these will be done fairly soon as well. Um, they're just kind of a every now and then sort of project. I haven't been really feeling like I need to push through. They're just a, just a fun thing to have on the needles. I also have these in my little sock bag that I made a little tutorial on a few weeks ago. Um, and yeah, it's been working really well. So I have one new work in progress to share with you and it is using a few new yarns. So um, I have been just loving both the Holst, the Holst Darn Super Soft as well as Knit Picks yarn. I feel like that's all I've been knitting with lately, which, work, which works out really well because they're very budget friendly, um, fairly easy to come by and um, yeah, I've just yeah been really happy with them so with the holst it was right before baby came along and i was feeling really frustrated um and i saw they were having a spring cleaning sale i think is how they marketed it and i'm um, selling off a lot of their yarns which are already fairly affordable for even cheaper so i picked up a few colors with a few specific projects in mind um and I've been working on a sweater for my daughter and I just had this idea kind of for a design and so I thought I would get started on it and um, we'll see if it turns out well I might write up the pattern and kind of put it out there if it doesn't well then I just have one sweater of it and that'll be fine these are the four colors that I am using all right and this is the sweater so far I just split for the sleeves um, I'm thinking of this as being like the Starburst sweater. It feels like one of those Starburst uh, mirrors, like from the 70s. And it's got these lines coming down with these little baubles. And my plan is to do kind of different sections of striping where it goes from like the pink, then the pink, um, and this blue color marled together, and then two strands of the blue. I am holding it double. And then a blue and the purple, and then two of the purple at the very bottom. And I use that graphite color for the color work in here. It is very simple color work, um, but was really kind of fun to work on. I know it will, it hasn't been blocked or anything, so it will lay a little flatter. You can see some of the increases and things at this point. Um, but yeah, I kind of am really enjoying how it's looking so far. I'm trying to knit this about a size six. I split for the sleeves and I'm going to do the striping down the sleeves as well. And yeah, that's kind of where that's at. We will see how it all comes together. And again, this is that hole that blooms so well. So you can tell that the ribbing looks kind of see-through right now, but I just know given these last couple sweaters I've made, it'll just kind of puff out and um, get rid of those little holy spots. So that is where this little top is at for now. So I just grabbed my tags for the whole start. So I got the magenta, amethyst, aquamarine, and graphite colors. So if you're interested in finding any of those on their website, they have a ton of colors available. Um, and these are the ones I'm using on this project. However, I picked up a couple more colors that I plan to use for some other projects. And um, like I said, they were doing their spring sale and they had quite a lot of their cotton linen blends on sale. So I, it's called their Coast. Um, maybe you you might remember on my, my everything sweater, um, I used the cotton wool blend. So this is the cotton linen blend. Whole sells a lot of their yarns both by the cone and also individually. If you buy the cone, it's 500 grams and they're quite a lot cheaper than buying them individually, but like not for every project would you need 500 grams, obviously. So I picked this one up. This is the marsh color. It's a really nice green and I think that with the linen cotton it'll make some kind of really nice summer top. I have a few patterns I've been looking at um, for this but I haven't completely decided which it's going to be. I really I want I really like the idea of it being like a t-shirt with some sort of lace along the top and then more solid the rest of the way um, and I could either hold it single or a double. So I have some choices to make, but I want to finish up everything I have on my needles before casting it on. So even this morning I was looking again at some of the t-shirt options to see what might work. Um, but I do expect this will probably be my next cast on. I also picked up a cone. This is the color plum. I plan to hold this double and I think I'm going to make myself the Ingle sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyla Knitworks. 
So I picked, when I got this, I was thinking of using this same graphite color that I'm using on the color work here as the color work in this sweater. However, I know I won't have enough. So I'm still kind of debating what my best plan will be for the color work on that sweater. There's not a lot. It's just like a large kind of flowery pattern, um, large scale. And so I'm still deciding on that. It's a long sleeve sweater and probably looking at working on that a little later. So it, I mean, I won't really be wearing it until closer to fall anyways. Um, but I really like this plum. It's a deep burgundy sort of color with some purplish undertones. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really pretty to work on. It's also really interesting with these two cones, this one, it feels so much more firm than this one, which just has like a springy feel to it. And that's definitely just the wool versus the cotton linen. But it's just interesting in these large quantities, how much you can tell um, the difference of that fiber content. So I was really excited to get the Holst order in. And it's just one of those things that um, comparing prices when you're ordering, Holst Garn is made and sold from Denmark. So you can purchase from a Canadian supplier, but it is about twice what you pay when you buy it directly. And even with shipping, it's still very reasonable. So for some of these sweaters, when it's like under $10 to make a whole sweater, it really feels worth it to purchase online and wait for it to come in when you get a really nice natural 100% wool um, for that's available in tons of colors for a really good price. So I was really happy both to find it, the sale and I hear they have a really big Black Friday sale, um, which I will probably be watching for at that point if I get knitted through all of this by that time. So I also want to share what I got from Knit Crate this month for April and the monthly sock crate which is one skein of fingering weight yarn that comes every month and it's the Yuru yarn and this is in heels and toes colorway is shield bug it is 80 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon really really pretty this is kind of the same plum color as that holst I just shared with you with a deep eggplanty violet mixture I think those will look so pretty mixed together. So with the sock crate this month also came a set of stitch markers. These here and they're little star shaped, which I think are so cute. You can see it there. The little tin just slides open and See if you can tell tiny little stars. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to giving those a try and just a fun little extra that came with that. And then I also received the regular knit crate box, which I haven't gotten before, um, but it has two skeins every month that come. This is the Audine Wools and it is a DK weight in the Leaf Easter sorry leaf in the leaf eater colorway this nice and minty green color so yeah i'm really excited about that if you are interested in knit crate i do have a coupon code that is diy mom life 20 to get you 20 percent off your order um yeah and just thank you to knit crate for sending these yarns i know i will really enjoy working with them and i was actually looking and wondering if they would work for the color work with the angle sweater not sure how i feel about it yet but it is on my list of things to look at and think about and maybe even swatch it and see how it looks in the end all right so that's pretty much all the yarn stuff i have to share with you this week um yeah i've been really glad to have knitting in my life lately it's just something that was so nice to have waiting for baby um those last few weeks when everything kind of hurts it's hard to do things and being able to feel a little bit productive um while also doing a lot of feels like sitting around and not having a baby yet um it was just really nice to have and i was really glad for that um so this little girl was born on april 10th and she was due april 27th so yeah those two weeks felt so long um 
and since then we have been back home everyone has been adjusting she is number three in our family and um yeah her big brother and sister have been just loving getting to know her and being so excited about every little thing she does which has been really fun um to have we are so glad she is here and yeah it's just i'm really looking forward to this summer being home with the kids looking forward to spending time outside i really hope that she stays an easy baby um so far she's you know two weeks old so hasn't been too upset about anything aside from being naked so can't complain about that um because i think i might get some questions she is this is my be mama ring sling I don't know if any of you have watched any of my early videos I had some baby wearing related things on this channel to start with and there's really active baby wearing community online all sorts of weaving and you know it kind of ties in with all the fibery related stuff um, that I have been enjoying now in these last few years. This is hand woven by the brand is Uppy Mama. It's made out of Alberta. Um, Red Deer, I think, is where the company is from. This is a fairly old sling. It's called the Uppy Mama Siri. Um, and slings like this, they can be really expensive if you get them new, um, but there's a really vibrant buying and selling um, online community um, where you can find all sorts of things available. Okay, so that's all I have to share with you this week. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will do my best to get back at you. Um, and if not, I will be back again. I don't know what my posting schedule is going to be like in the coming weeks and months, um, but we'll just take it as it comes. And I just thank you for sticking around with me here. All right, until next time. Bye.